Hello fellow teachers! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So kung bago ko pala sa channel ko ay welcome na welcome ka. Ako nga pala si Sir Oliver. I'm a teacher, vlogger, and a photographer. So kung bago ko pala sa channel ko ay don't forget to subscribe and hit the post notification bell na dyan sa baba para lagi kang updated every time na magpapost ako ng bagong video. So for today's video, I will be sharing you a presentation na pwede nyo magamit uh, sa inyong lack session or SLE or school learning episode na alam ko makakatulong uh, during classroom observation or hindi lang sa classroom observation maging sa inyong pagtuturo. So napakalaga na maging innovative tayo as a teachers lalo na ngayong new normal to make our uh, teaching engaging, interesting and at the same time it should be fun. So ngayon ay magbibigay ako ng uh, 10 suggested activities na pwede nyo gamitin sa inyong mga lessons. So I hope na makatulong to sa inyong lahat. So ito ay isa sa mga approaches sa tinatawag nating 2C, 2I, 1R approach at ito yung sa collaborative approach. So, during face-to-face -face ay talagang puro mga group activities yung mga binibigay natin sa mga bata or mga group works. So, kung nahihirapan kayo mag isep ng mga activity na pwede nyo magamit sa bawat lesson ay I hope na makatulong ito sa inyo. So, without further ado, let's get right into the video. It can be used in the school learning episode. So, I will be discussing the 2C, 2I, 1R pedagogical approaches. So, ito yung approach na dapat natin integrate sa ating lesson sa mga activities. So, I will be sharing you some innovative formative assessment. A parent teaching a child to cook would never say that was 74%. Instead, the parent would watch, demonstrate, and allow the child a chance to get better. These acts of mindful nurturing and guidance are examples of natural learning and we perform them instinctively. So, napakaganda ng sinabi dito. So, this was uh, taken from the Mindful Assessment, the Six Essential uh, Fluencies of Innovative Learning. It's just like in the uh, Edgar Dale Cone of Experience. So, mas na demonstrate mas napapanood, or mas na-experience ng bata, mas malaki yung chance na matutunan niya ang isang bagay. So, ganun dapat yung ginagawa natin. So, it's not all about written works. So, kailangan ma-expose din sila into different performance tasks wherein we will allow them to be a uh, someone, halimbawa magbibigay tayo ng goal na kailangan nilang ma-achieve, and then meron silang role, and then kailangan meron kang situations na ibibigay, and then kailangan nilang ma-meet yung expectation depende dun sa rubric for grading na ibibigay mo. So, something like that. So, innovative formative assessment examples are part of what defines any modern classroom. So, I think in today's time, modern classroom na talaga, even though uh, walang face-to-face, -face, even before, since uh, digital age na tayo, ay talagang may integration na ng information, communication, technology, or with the use of ICT. So, napakahalaga na mayutilize natin or magamit natin ng tama yung ICT in presenting the lessons, by letting them to watch the videos, lalo na in science, kasi mas nagiging, alam mo yun, uh, realistic in the sense na mas nakikita talaga nila yung process or yung system. So, they provide crucial information about what students understand and what they don't. These ungraded assessments are also valuable guides for students. It can help them enhance their performance. Teachers can use them to determine if further instructions is necessary. So, binibigay natin yung formative assessment bago tayo mag-start ng lesson. Kung baga, para malaman natin, ay, ano na ba yung prior knowledge ni student? Ano pa yung kailangan natin ituro sa kanila? But these activities or suggested, suggested activities ay hindi lamang for formative. So, it can be used 
as well in the summative assessment. So using innovative formative assessment consistently and effectively removes the surprises from getting final grades. When integrated into teaching and learning on an ongoing basis, students can constantly improve and excel. So, ibig sabihin nito, hindi lamang kailangan natin pag-isipang mabuti yung activities during classroom observation knowing na ito ay graded. So, kailangan consistent daw or merong sustainability when in terms of activities para talagang madriven yung mga estudyante na mas pagbutihin pa at mag-excel doon sa subject mo. Kailangan parang every day or hindi naman uh, every day kailangan per week ay eh, talagang meron kang nakahandang activities na mag -e enjoy talaga sila at the same time hindi nila namamalayan na namamaster na pala nila or natututunan yung certain learning competency and learning is talagang really fun So, what follows are 10 innovative formative assessment strategies for teachers to try out. So, pwede nyo itong itry sa inyong mga lessons. Remember that true formative assessment is assessment for learning and as learning. It's the continual cycle of feedback and improvement that makes that learning both useful and effective. So, the first one is analyzing student work. A great deal of information can be learned from students' homework, tests, and quizzes. This is especially so, so if the students are required to explain their thinking. When teachers take the time to analyze student work, they gain knowledge about. So once we analyze the work of our students, binasa nating mabuti, for example, mga essay work to, so mas ma-assess natin kung ano bang klaseng estudyante meron tayo. And it really takes time for us to analyze students' work, lalo na kapag sobrang dami nating estudyante, ano, napakadami nating uh, kailangang gugulin na oras para ma-analyze lang yung gawa ng isang student. A student's current knowledge, attitudes, and skills about subject matter, strength, weaknesses, and learning styles, need for further or special assistance. So this approach lets teachers modify their instruction to be more effective in the future. The second one is the round-robin charts. This strategy involves passing charts among groups to assess understanding. So each group of four or five students begins with a chart and some markers. The group records an answer to an open-ended question. They can also share knowledge they have on a topic covered in class. Once the students finish with the chart, they pass it on to the next group. Once every group has worked on every chart, responses are discussed as a class. So meaning to say na it requires a group efforts among students. So depending lang sa inyo kung paano nyo siya may implement sa klase nyo yung tinatawag natin na round robin charts. Ayan. And then, the next one is the strategic questioning. So, eto, lagi kong ginagawa sa klase ko na after abstraction. So, nagkakaroon ako ng analysis. So, ang analysis ko is by questioning. Kasi dito sa questioning ay pwede mong maano yung kanilang hats or higher order thinking skills. Questioning strategies may be used with individuals, small groups, or the entire class. Effective formative assessment strategies involve asking students to answer higher order questions such as why and how. For example, nag-present ka ng uh, activity, so kailangan doon sa activity mo ay uh, masagot nila yung question na how. So, paano nila nakuha yung answer? So, ano yung mga steps na ginawa nila? And then, higher order questions require more in-depth thinking from the students. They can help the teacher discern the level and extent of the student's understanding. So, by means of asking questions, so, ma-analyze mo dun sa kanilang answers Saan ba sila nahihirapan o anong part ba ng activity yung hindi nila nagets So, strategic questioning. And of course, kailangan pag nagawa ka ng questions ay kailangan maganda yung pagkakakonstruct mo ng question. 
So number four, three-way summaries. So the idea here is to use different modes of thinking and attention to detail. Students can work in groups or individually. In response to a question or topic inquiry, they write three different summaries. So 10 to 15 words long, 30 to 50 words long, or 75 to 100 words long. So I think I nagagamit yun na tong, uh, summary so it will generalize the whole lesson the whole lesson maji generalize niya na doon yung malalaman na ano ba talaga yung natutunan ng estudyante sa isang topic or sa isang learning competency so by 10 to 15 words doon mababasa mo pa lang na nakuha niya na yung mga keywords or key points na kailangan niyang tandaan yung mga important formulas yung mga important uh Concepts and terminologies. So, by means of uh, summarization. You can even have students use Twitter or Facebook. Ayan. Chances are you've got a lot of students who use it already. They'll have experience communicating messages with minimal wording and characters. So, pwede ka namang, uh, for example, lal na si ESP, ano, if you want, uh, if you would like to share something na informative, ayan, pwede kayong gumamit ng hashtag. For example, you have a certain theme, halimbawa ay about sa katapatan, and then they need to have a slogan that should be posted in Twitter or Facebook, and then using the same hashtag, halimbawa, hashtag, uh, katapatan, and then their uh, subject, halimbawa, ay katapatan, ESP8, and then their section. And, Siyempre, para mabasa nyo ay kailangan nila ng uh, proof. So, pwede nilang screenshot or pwede nilang itag yung uh, teacher. And of course, before posting, kailangan ay na-check muna ni teacher kung tama ba yung ipopost sa social media because it will be read by everybody. So, magiging malaki yung impact kapag na-ipost na agad siya nang hindi siya na itatama. And then... The fifth one is think, pair, share. Ito yung kalimitang ginagamit sa mga math class wherein you will be assigning somebody or someone to be his or her partner and then parang it's like uh, peer tutoring, yung ganun yung uh, discard niya. This is one of the many formative assessment strategies that is simple for teachers to use. The instructor asks a question and students write down their answers. Students are then placed in pairs to discuss their responses. Teachers are able to move around the classroom and listen to various discussions. It lets them gain valuable insight into levels of understanding. Minsan kasi merong mga type ng students na when, te when the teacher communicates the lesson, parang hindi maintindihan kung ano yung ibig sabihin, parang ganun. Pero once na inexplain na ng kanyang classmate, Minsan, aminin natin na parang mas gets ko pa yung sinabi mo kaysa sa, ginam sa sinabi ni teacher. Kung maga, yung level kasi, yung level ng understanding ng students, minsan ay bumababa doon sa level na halimbawa, same age sila and same grade level. Minsan kasi, uh, kapag inexplain ni teachers, minsan ay sa paraang hindi nare-reach nung students. sabi natin mga uh, students that needs improvement. So, sa ganitong paraan ay talagang uh, it will uh, influence uh, it will influence or the classmate will learn from his or her uh, seatmate. Something like that. And then, for number six is three, two, one, countdown. This is a true test or of relevant and meaningful learning when students learn something they find useful. They're likely to want to use that learning in some way. Have students end the day with this one. Give them cards to write on or they can respond orally. They are required to respond to three separate statements. Three things you didn't know before. Two things that surprise you about this topic. One thing you want to start doing with what you've learned. Parang ito yung kanilang magiging exit ticket, di ba? Kung familiar kayo dun sa assessment, assessment na entry ticket, tsaka exit ticket. So, ito yun. 3, 2, 1, countdown. You can also ask them different kinds of questions. These are suggestions, so feel free to make up your own. Ayan. So, napakaganda nito. 
And then for number seven, classroom pulse. So pwede tayo dito gumamit ng technology, di ba? Napakaraming na nga yung uh, technology na pwedeng magamit to survey their answers or responses. Pulse, let students give responses quickly and accurately. A silent poll is perfect for those shy students who have trouble speaking up. These are also a quick way to check understanding using uh, mobile technology try tools like Poll Everywhere or Survey Planet. For example, if, if you would like to ask them, di ba lagi naman ganon, uh, ginagamit natin, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down, thumbs up kapag naintindihan and thumbs up, uh, thumbs down kapag hindi naintindihan. Or meron silang mga cards, happy face kapag naintindihan and then uh, sad face kapag hindi naintindihan. But there are students na talagang mahiyain. So, pwede naman tayong gumamit ng technology, di ba? Kailangan nga natin maging innovative eh. So, meron tayo dito ginagamit na tool like Poll Everywhere or Survey Planet that we can use in our assessment. So, that's very effective. For number eight, exit or admit tickets. So it's just like the three to one countdown. A simple but effective formative assessment is the exit ticket. Exit tickets are small pieces of paper or cards that students deposit as they leave the classroom. Students write down an accurate interpretation of the main idea behind the lesson taught that day. Next, they provide more detail about the topic. Ayan. So, we're in dito sa exit tickets ay makikita mo, talagang mababasa mo kung tama ba yung pagkaka-interpret or tama ba yung pagkaka-intindi ni student doon sa certain uh, lesson mo. Admit tickets are done at the very beginning of the class. Students may respond to questions about homework or on the lesson taught the day before. So, Parang, eto na rin yung uh, review of the past lesson. So, malalaman mo kung kailangan bang magkaroon ng remediation or kailangan bang i-reteach ni teacher by using different uh, strategies or activities. Ayan. So, yun yung tinatawag nating admit tickets. So, ginagamit ko to sa aking uh, science class. Before I proceed to my next lesson, ay nagkakaroon sila ng admit tickets. In just a piece of paper. So, madali lang naman i-assess yun. Mabasahin nyo lang siya. And then, gagawa lang kayo ng parang pinaka-summary. Di ba? Parang nag-evaluate kayo, tapos gagawa lang kayo ng interpretation ng inyong evaluation. And then, for number nine, one-minute papers. One-minute papers are usually done at the end of the day. Students can work individually or in groups here. They must answer a brief question in writing. Typical questions posed by teachers center around. Ayan. So, main point. Most surprising concept, questions not answered, most confusing area of topic, what question from the topic might appear on the next test. So, by means of one-minute paper, di ba, makikita mo talaga yung uh, excitement sa mga student. Talagang mapapaisip talaga sila, ano ba yung nakakatuwa doon sa ating pinag-aralan ngayon? Saan ka ba medyo nalito? Ano yung gusto mong malinawan? Kasi di ba mahirap kapag mayroon tayong question sa isip natin na hindi nasasagot? Di ba mas maganda pa rin yung uh, at the end of the day, uuwi ka sa bahay or uuwi yung mga estudyante mo sa bahay na wala silang questions. So masaya sila, naiintindihan nila para sa next lesson ay talagang makakasabay sila. Lalo na kapag yung lesson ay mga prerequisite, just like in Math 8. Kasi yung una doon ay factoring tapos ay rational expression. So once hindi mo na master yung factoring, so of course hindi ka hindi mo talaga magegets yung sa uh, simplifying rational expression or yung mga operations in rational expression. I mean not only in mathematics but also in other subjects. So kapag ganun yung uh, scenario, uh, talagang hindi na magiging interesado, somewhat hindi na magiging interesado yung mga estudyante kapag meron silang confusion doon sa iyong topic. Without formative assessments, the first indication that a student doesn't grasp the material is when they fail a quiz or a test. An innovative formative assessment strategy like this can take failure out of the classroom. So that's why uh, formative assessments is really helpful and is very important 
part of the lesson. So, kaya nga kailangan uh, formative assessment pa lang ay talagang pag-iisipan na agad ni teachers para mas makuha yung magandang result or assessment na kinakailangan for you to be able to address the needs, the needs of the learners. And then for number 10, we have the creative extension projects. So, ito yung sa mga performance tests that you can give. Students can create a large scope of projects to demonstrate comprehension. So, quick projects help them apply the higher order levels of Bloom's taxonomy. These don't have... So, yung sa higher order levels of Bloom's taxonomy, so alam na natin yan. So, these don't have to be big and complicated. Kasi once that you have given them, so kung ang purpose mo lang of giving projects is them for them para mahirapan sila, so that's a big no. So kailangan they can take a day, half a day, or even an hour. Here are some extension ideas for quick projects. Of course, you are giving projects to our students, hindi para pahirapan sila. Of course, kailangan nilang ma-realize na this will prepare them for the future. So, what if malalaking, uh, nagtatrabaho na sila, malalaking project na yung ibigay sa kanila? Paano nila uh, masusolusyonan or ma-overcome yung project na yun? Paano nila ma-accomplish? So, yun yung uh, purpose. That's why we are giving projects to students. At kailangan, matapos nila yung within the day or half day or even an hour. Ayan. So, hindi dapat sobrang halimbawa, isang buwan nilang tatrabawin yung project para masyado na siyang uh, mabigat sa part ng students. And we should be considerate, no? Or we have to consider that in giving projects. So, ito yung mga projects na pwede nating ibigay. So, create a poster or collage illustrating the subject matter. So, napakaganda, no? Kapag nagbigay ka ng poster making, so, kailangan ibigay mo yung theme. Kailangan ay malinaw. Malinaw mo na isaad yung directions kung ano ba yung kailangan makita sa poster or do sa collage na gagawin nila. Record or rehearse a skit or podcast discussing the topics covered. Ito napakaganda nitong gawin. Ano? Lalo na sa mga ESP. So, napakaganda yung mga skit or podcast. Build a diorama about the subject and create a narrative behind it sa Filipina subject. The experience kong gumawa before ng diorama. Let students design their own flashcards to test each other with. So, sa mathematics, ako na talaga nagpapagawa ko ng flashcards in science. Nagpapagawa din ako ng flashcards. Kasi talaga napakahalaga ng flashcards. Diba, during elementary, ginagamit na siya. Kahit ngayong high school, eh, napakagandang drill pa rin ng flashcards. Kasi it's more of the mastery of the lesson. So, talaga mas maganda yung paulit-ulit, diba? Kapag merong drill or practice, so merong retention or merong memorization at merong mastery of the lesson. Keynote presentations made by students on the topic. So, nauuso yung mga uh, module. Di ba? Yung mga module na pinapagawa sa students. You have the parts of the module. Ayan. So, yung, kailangan nilang mga ano yung mga keynotes of the presentation. So, eto na. Collaborative learning na to. So, uh, I will continue na lang yung aking uh, video next time. So, I hope that you learned something today. Uh, thank you for watching. Again, if may natutunan kayo or gusto nyo siyang share, I feel free to share with others. And thank you for watching. Bye.